The simple definition of a gerund is a verbal noun, uh, but it's going to be distinct from the infinitive. Remember, the infinitive is also a verbal noun. Uh, the gerund is distinct from the infinitive in that it's used in very circumscribed situations uh, in only the oblique cases. That is, it's only going to be found in the genitive, the dative, the accusative, and the ablative. And as far as formation goes, uh, it's going to be uh, quite easy to recognize because it's uh, identical to the uh, future passive participle. So it's going to end in, it's going to have the nd to mark it. Uh, I like to say that it's, uh, it's got the nd just as gerund has the nd ending it. So uh, identifying the gerund and forming it is going to be uh, simple. Uh, using it is also going to be fairly simple because it's a it's only used in very particular situations. Uh, the other so as a as a basic definition, a gerund is a verbal noun. It is neuter, and it is singular. So let's get on to forming it and then using it. So. Uh, as I said, the forms are identical to the future passive participles. They're neuter and singular, so the endings are also going to be uh, neuter and singular in uh, the, the second, uh, second declension. So there's no nominative. That's important to remember. The genitive is going to end in ndi, so i. Ndo for the dative, o. Ndum, accusative, and ndo for ablative. Let's take a look at uh, this with particular conjugations. So woko is first conjugation. So we're going to add those endings onto the stem of woka. So wokandi, wokando, wokandum, wokando. Second conjugations, like habeo, take our stem, habe, and add our endi. Habendi, habendo, habendum, habendo. Rego, third conjugation, consonant stem, regendi, there's our stem, which we can get from the second principal part, dropping the RE, regendi, regendo, regendum, regendo. Facio, our third IO, our third I stems. Remember, with I stems, we want to keep that I in the stem, so faciendi, faciendo, faciendum, faciendo. Keep that E also, so faciendi. And our fourth conjugation, audio, uh, like the third IOs, we're going to keep the IE, audiendi, audiendo, audiendum, audiendo. So they are uh, declined, since this, this is a noun, they are declined all the same. Uh, the only difference is going to be the stem, and that's going to be determined by the conjugation. Uh, there are no plurals, uh, there is no nominative, so forming it is, is probably among the easiest things that you're going to... Uh, to, to encounter in Latin. Now using it uh, is also going to be fairly easy because these are all going to be uses that you've already run into in Latin. Anyway, uh, they're used in, in, like I said, very certain situations. So the genitive. Uh, the genitive is not going to be used for possession. Instead we're going to be using it for the objective genitive. As we see here, amor regendi love of ruling. Right? And amor could be in any case, but regendi here is our genitive gerund. Or metu cadendi, uh, because of, so I put metu in the ablative to demonstrate that, that uh, this noun could be in any case. Uh, fear of falling, cadendi here, genitive, is the object of fear. Fear of falling. The other use that we can find is with uh, the genitive, with causa or gratia, uh, generally translated as for the sake of, but genitive plus causa or gratia equals, it demonstrates purpose. It's another way to show purpose. So audiendi causa, notice there's our uh, genitive gerund, and there's causa, it's an ablative, for the sake of hearing, or 
in order to hear. And this is going to be the standard word order, where the genitive precedes the causa. And we could also use gratia uh, for the sake of playing in order to play. Both of these are showing purpose. So these causa and gratia, they are synonyms, and they're going to be preceded by the genitive gerund. Those are the two main uses of the genitive that you're going to use, uh, that you're going to find the, gen uh, the gerund in. The dative is the rarest of all the ger uh, gerund cases, but it is found with, uh, in, in certain situations. It's found with uh, particular phrases. So uh, here is sort of a dative of indirect object. Uh, he gave attention to, he gives attention to, dot operam is an idiom, dot operam, he gives attention to, what does he give attention to? Laborando, to working. So that's sort of our uh, two or four case. It's also found with particular adjectives, adjectives denoting uh, uh, utility for, so utiles, libri utilis legendo sunt, books are useful for reading, and we could also, the negative, in utilis, in utiles. Uh, they're not useful for reading. So there's our four readings, so two or four. Uh, suitability, opti, this is a very common adjective which uses the dative gerund. Milites opti pugnando sunt, the soldiers are suitable for fighting. And then with uh, certain, so we have the dative indirect object, we've got dative with certain adjectives, and then we've got dative with compounds. So here, prisum, to be in charge of, I am in charge of playing, ludendo. Uh, so here's our compound, prisum, that takes a dative object. The accusative is used in only one situation, and it is not the direct object. It's only going to be used with certain prepositions, most importantly, odd, right? most commonly odd, although sometimes you'll see in or ob or a few others, to show purpose. That's the only way we're going to use the accusative gerund. So, ad audiendum, in order to hear. So there's our gerund, in order to hear. Ad ludendum, there's our accusative gerund with the preposition ad, in order to play. Ad pugnandum, in order to fight the only way you're going to see the accusative gerund. Uh, now this odd could also be in uh, or ob on account of, but really they're all showing purpose. And then the ablative is going to be used uh, in three particular ways. And again, these are all ways that you've already seen the ablative. Uh, so we've got means. So we could use means, cause, or uh, uh, means or cause. Uh, loquendo, there's our ablative. He persuades by speaking. All right, so these are going to be ablatives without preposition. Uh, we won the war by fighting. We could also have it with comparatives. So we've got Ablatives without prepositions, ablatives with comparatives. So reading is better than listening. So ablative of comparison, so ablative of means or cause, ablative of comparison. And then finally, we can have it with the ablative with prepositions. So those prepositions that take the ablative case can also take an ablative gerund. So non potest discere, you are not able to learn, Sine legendo. There's our ablative uh, gerund. 
with the preposition sine without reading. And those are the, the situations where you're going to run into the gerund. Uh, it's not uh, other than recognizing this is a new form and treating that ing, so reading, playing, listening, as a noun, uh, I don't think you're going to run into many problems translating uh, the gerund.